Hi there, I want to go over how to do type 3 sums of squares, ANOVA, and R. If you use SPSS, then you probably know that the default in SPS, SPSS is type 3. However, when you first try to learn R and you learn about ANOVA, if you compare your results between the two programs, you'll probably notice that they appear to be different. And that's because R uses type 1 sums of squares as its default. The main difference is that the, mo the most commonly used is type 3, and type 3 is really, really used because it can take advantage of the fact uh, of finding interactions. And a lot of times that's really what we want to look at is if we have several independent variables and we want to see how they're affecting the dependent variable, if there are several levels of each independent variable, then we might want to see how those interact. And to give you an example, I'll show you the data set that I'm going to use for both SPSS and R. And I'm looking at weight gain in rats by diet amount. This is amount of fat, so high fat or low fat. Or by diet type, which is beef, pork, or cereal. So there's two levels here, high and low, but there's three levels within type. So I have a two by three ANOVA. And it would be really nice to also see if there's an interaction. So does a high fat diet result in a different amount of weight gain if it's with pork than if the high fat is with beef? So I want to see how those interact together. In R, what I've done is I've loaded up the same data set and I use the read.csv function to do that. I've loaded it in. I've called it data1 and I attached it. So R is going to read my commands from, from that data set. If I want to make sure I've got the right data set, I can use names, data1, control R, and what it'll bring up is the names. And you'll see I've got the same, same one loaded, weight gain, amount, and type. And what I've done is why you see these being repeated in, in these two columns, as an SPSS, it's beneficial to go into the variable view and give them values so that one is beef, two is pork, three is cereal, whereas here for amount, low is one, low fat one, two is high fat. And so SPSS knows that it's a nominal measurement and that it's a grouping variable, that there's groups and there's different levels within that independent variable. R really is easy in that sense and that I don't really have to do that. So I'm gonna show you what I would do if I wanted to do uh, ANOVA with type three sums of squares in R. And what I would do is I'm gonna call it M1. The M stands for model. M1 equals LM for linear model. So I'm gonna create a linear model first. All I have to do is type the name of the variable. My dependent variable is weight gain, and since I've attached it, weight gain appears here. So I'm going to click it, and I'm going to put a tilde. And what that means is I'm predicting weight gain by amount times type. Now the reason I've done that with the asterisk is that this is gonna allow me to do an interaction. When I put an asterisk here, it's gonna look at amount, it'll look at type, and then it'll look at the interaction of amount and type together. If I did not want to do the interaction, I could just replace that with a plus sign, and it would look at amount and type separately. But I'm interested in the interaction, as a lot of times, um, that's what we're looking at when we have multiple variables with, with different levels is it's nice to look at how they interact with each other. So pretty simple, weight gain tilde, amount, asterisk type. If I hit control R, it's created M1 for me. And if I hit summary M1, it's gonna give me some results down below. And the results are gonna show you, first of all, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and I wanna see 
if the model is significant. And the very last thing I see is a p-value of 0 0.002. So I know the model is significant with an F statistic of 4.3. Now, what I can look at here is it's gonna give me some ideas, possibly, of the, uh, you know, the coefficients. This is, this is the linear model here. So um, it's giving me the coefficients of amount and type. And right now, it's not maybe making too much sense from an ANOVA point of view, but they really are the same things when you talk about ANOVA and the linear model. So now if I want to get an ANOVA table to kind of clarify some things for me, I can do ANOVA M1. And this probably looks more familiar to you if you were expecting an ANOVA table. So I already know it's significant. This is my significance value, p-value of 0 0.002. But now I want to see if there are differences by amount, type, or by the interaction. So what I do is these are my p-values here, probability. And I see that amount is less than 0 0.05. But type and the interaction of amount and type are not so the only significant thing that's that's really fleshing out in this example is that the amount of diet whether it was a high fat or low fat diet really had the impact the biggest impact on weight gain it was the big the big difference maker here so let's see if i get the same results the same f values the same sums of squares if i do it in spss so i'm going to click over to spss we'll go back to data view and I'm going to analyze this. I'm going to go to general linear model, univariate, and I'll reset it for us. My dependent variable is weight gain. That's what I'm trying to predict. And my factors, my fixed factors are type of diet and diet amount. What I want to do is go into model and what it'll do, it will show you that SPSS defaults to type three sum, sums of squares, which is, which is here. However, I'm going to customize this by looking at the interaction, but also by looking at the main effects. So just like I did in R, I want all of those uh, in my model. And I'm gonna hit okay. And what I'm gonna do is I will get an output, I'll get results. And this gives me all of that information, but in one table. Whereas in R, I get it in a couple of different tables, but it's the exact same information. I think R is a little easier. I know the coding can be a little intimidating. Uh, however, I really, I really find it to be easier to do some things in R. So again, in R, my p-value is 0 0.002. In SPSS, corrected model, the significance 0 0.002. Let's go through here. Diet type by diet amount. So my interaction, 0 0.073, not significant. When I come to R, 0 0.073, it's not significant here either. Diet type is not significant, 0 0.541. Here you're seeing the same thing, 0 0.541. But diet amount is significant, 0 0.000. 000. See, so the amount is significant. Um, once you get used to um, the way that things are kind of laid out in R and the coding, uh, I'll show you in a second here how you can do even things like box plots very, very easily just because you know the general formula of some things in R. However, I do want to show you that the F values um, are the same. Remember F statistic 4.3. Here it is as well. And if you go through the different F values, you're going to see that, that they're the same. Um, so it is, it is the same. This is the easiest way that I've seen to do ANOVA with type 3 sum of squares in R. But I'll show you real quick. Um, remember, we're seeing that amount is really what seems to be predicting 
for being the, the deciding factor here on weight gain. So if I want to do a box plot in R, I just do box plot parentheses. Same kind of formula. I'm going to do weight gain till day. And let's put amounts. Now I'm going to make this a notch box plot. So I'm going to go N-O-T-C-H notch equals true. And then what I'm going to do is I'll label the axis. So X axis I'm going to label as amount of fat in diet. And then my Y label is going to equal weight. And when I hit control R again, here's the notation. If you're trying to follow along and see how to do this. The nice thing about a notched box plot is if the notches don't overlap with each other. So here's the notch and here's the notch and you can see they don't overlap is it means it's probably significant. There's a significant difference. One thing to also remember about box plots is the line in the middle is the median, it's not the mean. So here's the median for the high fat amount. Here's the median for the low fat. And this is the middle 50%, middle 50%. So just to show you then ANOVA, it did, it told me that, yeah, there's a significant difference between the high fat and the low fat. But what does the box plot look like um, if I want to do it by diet type, because remember there weren't differences there. So same thing, weight gain by type. Okay, and I'll just do notch. I'm not going to worry about doing labels this time just to show you. And what you can see is you get all these notches in the box plots overlapping to where none of them look very different from one another. Whereas here, you can see that as the notch ends here, this one doesn't begin until down below. So again, just by sometimes doing simple box plot, yes, you wanna verify statistically, but I think that R does a really nice job of just some really simple plots and once you learn, you can even color code these and, and add, add labels as I did in this, in this first one here. So I hope that makes sense for you to, you know, to get a type 3 sum of squares ANOVA. You're going to do the linear model first. It's the same thing, the linear model and the ANOVA. And then if you get the summary of the model, then you can take the ANOVA of the model. You will get the same results as you would in SPSS with type three sums of squares in R. Thank you for your time.